you're hearing me. If, if that is the case, it's okay. Thank you. Just uh, a few words to tell you that uh, transport has been trying to federate for many years already. Uh, the mission challenge with Bendham was a fantastic opportunity and exists since 1998. And we've been federating public and private sector around the transport issue linked to the climate case. And five years ago, I had a very quick talk with President Lula of Brazil during a Challenge Bibendum meeting. And he told me, it's amazing, 80 million people in Brazil out of 180 do not have access to mobility at all. And from that time, I remember strengthening my conviction that something had to be done, really, about transport, sustainability of transport, making sure that it was available, affordable, low carbon, and inclusive. So when we created, with uh, SLOCAT, the United Nations body, this uh, Paris Process for Mobility and Climate Initiative. It was all about bringing everybody together in this transport case. We all understand that transport is responsible for one-fourth of the energy-related emissions in the world. And the risk, of course, is that increases because of demand. There is no reason to oppose mobility to growth. This is a basic conviction. It's our job to make sure that mobility is sustainable, and that's it. So the good news is that we federated many, many public and private bodies, and we had this focus on transport the day before yesterday. And we shared, all of us, this fantastic conviction that mobility was possible and was not hurting climate if everybody was really ready to move. And so, for obvious societal reasons, and also because it is absolutely obvious that innovation is behind the change, and that innovation will bring jobs to the world. Well, for all these obvious reasons, we all thought now that emission mitigation in transport was a real must. And so a tremendous amount of initiative came on the ground. Fifteen of them, I would say, major. Ten of them really worked upon during that day. And to make a long story short, I would say these 10 big initiatives were related to three different areas. The first area was clearly urban mobility. We all understand what's it about. Conjections, health and safety issues, all the rest, you know that. But clearly, when we look at the number of initiatives that came along, I am now extremely optimistic about the future of mobility in towns. We will see these issues notably in all countries of the world, but notably in Africa in the, coming, in the coming years. We know that. So let's get ready. I'd like to quote here the initiative called Mobilize Your City. 100 developing world cities are working on that initiative. It's a matter of planification. I'd like also to quote the OITP pledge which is the Association of Public Transports, has pledged to double its market share in the coming years, which means that it can globally reduce the CO2 emissions. I'd like to quote also the Paris Declaration on e-mobility, where the pledge is to bring 20% of electric drive vehicles by 2030 in the town. That sort of pledge kind of federate a tremendous amount of initiatives. The Zero Emission Vehicle Alliance 
It was mentioned just before by the governor of California. The Worldwide Clean Taxi Initiative and the C40 Clean Bus Declaration, all about the 40 major cities in the world. Not to forget what's happening in towns in Europe, like London, where the low emission zones are now already there, and we are working upon ultra-low emission zones by 2020. There are many examples of that. So urban mobility is the first area. There, is, there are two others. One is the long-distance freight transport initiative, because there we know there's a tremendous amount of demand for freight in the future, and we know we have to act. If not, we will have more emissions without control. So in that area, we have to support the green freight initiatives, which includes all sorts of transport modes. And working on intermodality is absolutely key. This initiative calls for optimizing road and rail logistics, and we all know the cost of logistics in the world when it comes to climate issues. I'd like also to mention in that field the pledge of UIC, representing the railway companies in the world. There again, a huge pledge to reduce CO2 emissions. The last area, you wouldn't be surprised, is the passenger road vehicle initiative. 65 countries are already working on these initiatives, and maybe there will be 100 countries of that sort in the coming four to five years. It's all about reducing the energy needed for mobility. There is one specific project, by the way, reducing from eight liters per 100 kilometers to four liters per 100 kilometers in the coming few years. Well, it is possible. We we'll all know that. We have already been working on technologies that exist to create a two liters per 100 kilometers vehicle. So, as you said before, somebody here on the stage, why are we waiting so long? It is possible. I wouldn't be thorough if I didn't mention the ICO pledge, International Civil Aviation Organizations, which really wants to reach a carbon neutral growth by 2020. This is big. Also, the airport carbon accreditation initiatives, which drastically cuts down airport emissions by 2030. All these initiatives are huge. My message here to you is to tell you that the transport business in the world is on the move. And it will happen because it's not only private companies that are now on the move, but public bodies. And together, as a private public initiative, we will move, and faster than you can even think. So my message here is not only a message from Michelin, which has its own ambition, I can tell you, quite ambitious. It's a message from the whole transport activity, public and private. And we're here to tell you that we are moving ahead quickly. Thank you very much for your attention.